My name is Ron Holdaway, licensed Unity teacher and spiritual leader here at Unity Spiritual Center of Panama City. This is a heart-centered welcome to all of you to this online service where we know and affirm God loves everyone, no exceptions. God, by any name and unity, leaves no one out. United through love, we are one. And yes, I believe it's all about love. As we've discussed many times here at our center, no matter the conf chaos or conf confusion on the surface of our lives, we know the truth of our being is peace, love, and wisdom. And we find that at the center of our being when we rest in the silence and pray together. In this extraordinary, extraordinary time with the issues of COVID-19, the drastic changes in the economy, the 24-hour bombardment of the 24-hour news, we stay true to what we know is the truth. We breathe and rest in the silence to know that love is the glue that ties everything together. It ties us, our country, and the world together. I want you to know that each of you are in my thoughts and prayers, and you are loved. As we take time to join our consciousness via this technology, we change our thoughts, our feelings, and then we change the world as we change ourselves. So let's pray. Wherever we are at this moment, the fascinating and beautiful universal spirit of God connects us heart to heart in prayer. Focusing on disconcerting external appearances may bring up varying degrees of fear within us. So for this brief moment in time, and every time that we pause to do this, we turn our attention inward to the center of truth, where anything that's overwhelming us is quelled and doubts become quiet. Peace awaits our arrival at the center of our being, gently encompassing us in its marginless breath and circumference. From this space of peace, we experience ourselves as pure love, love that transcends limiting imperfect thoughts, fills spaces, and kneads the hard places into softness. From this place of peace, we pray for divine wisdom and guidance for our leaders around the world. We pray for divine strength and continued love for the nurses and doctors and first responders who are on the front line of this pandemic. We release attachment to specific outcome and trust in divine guidance and divine order to align us with whatever is necessary to fulfill our holy assignment and with what is in keeping with the highest and best for all. In deep gratitude and with energized face, faith, we realize these words and release these words into the atmosphere and witness their swift and complete manifestation. And so it is. Amen. The, the teachings that we do here at Unity, as we always say, can be applied to any belief system. So we affirm the innate goodness of the divine and the divine spark in each and every one of us. Through the prayer of our thoughts, uh, we connect to the divine presence within and manifest goodness in our life. We live our truth with integrity and faith. So for a few announcements here, join us weekly for our uh, new Zoom meditation call on Thursdays at 11 a.m. Zoom is a platform for collaboration Good day, everyone. Thank you for joining us virtually for today's service. I am here in my home, um, relaxing today and, of course, bringing you today's message. We're going to start out with the daily word. The daily word today is the divine in me sees the divine in all things. I'm going to let you see it here on the screen. The divine in me sees the divine in all things. Henry David Thoreau wrote in his journal, the question is not what you look at, but what you see. I realize the deep and abiding truth in this statement as I look around me today. I know I can choose to be dismayed by what I lack or amazed at my abundance. I can be discouraged by how far I have to go or be proud of my accomplishments. I can choose to focus on differences between people 
or embrace all the things we have in common on the human journey. My life changes drastically with the choices I make. So I choose to remember that God is all there is, and I am part of that allness. So And so is everything else. I see infinite potential in a loving world through the eyes of the divine, and so I grow. So I'd ask you to say the affirmation with me today. The divine in me sees the divine in all things. One more time. The divine in me sees the divine in all things. Let us prepare for meditation. I'd ask for you to get comfortable in your chair or wherever you're at, if you're seated um, or if you're lying down, um, just make yourself comfortable, relax your muscles. If you're seated, you might wanna put your feet firmly on the floor, maybe rest your arms in your lap or by your side. And I'm gonna take you through a loving kindness meditation today. First, we're gonna focus on ourselves and then we're gonna focus on um, placing those loving kindness words um, out there for others. You might even feel like closing your eyes during this meditation, whatever it is that puts you in a nice relaxed state of mind. And let's begin by taking in a nice deep breath and blowing it out through our mouths. Let's do that one more time. And just feel the tensions that are there just melting away. We know wherever we're at, we're in a safe place. And I want you to think about that indwelling divine presence, that allness that is in each of us and that allness that is inside of you. And just take a moment to connect to that space. And when you're ready, I want you to think of these words as your own. I am happy. I am well. I am at peace. I am happy. I am well. I am at peace. Take a moment to know these words to be true. I am happy. I am well. I am at peace. Now I want you to take a moment to think about others in your life someone that you love and care for. And I want you to think of these words as if you're saying them to the person. Keep that person in your mind's eye. You are well. You are happy. You are at peace. You are well. You are happy. You are at peace. Now I want you to think of somebody that maybe you have negative feelings for or that you have a disagreement with and put them in your mind's eye. And imagine saying this to them. You are well. You are happy. You are at peace. You are well, you are happy, you are at peace. Now I want you to expand your thoughts, not just to your loved ones and even those you have maybe disagreements with, but everybody that's in your community, everybody that's in your state, everybody that's in this country and everybody who is in the world. We are all fighting this together. We're all in the same fight. So extend these words of loving kindness. Hello 
Hello everybody, welcome back. I am Melissa Aaron and I will be conducting the Sunday service today from the uh, nice kind of um, quiet atmosphere of my home. And um, so let's get started today. We are in our fifth week of the Lent season. Now last week, Bill Warner, our board president, led us through a virtual message on the meaning of grace. And he reminded us that grace does not have to be earned. Rather, it is inherently available to us as expressions of God. Bill also walked us through some of the denials and affirmations from the Fasting and Feasting 2020 booklet, which I hope that you are following along with, um, even as we're doing the virtual um, Sunday services from home. Now, these denials and affirmations reminded us to fast from being rigid, to fast from stress and from chaos, and to feast on resilience and serenity and order, all those qualities that we know are available to us at every moment and at any time. Now, this past week was indeed a tough one. For many of us, it was our second week of what experts are calling social distancing, or you know where we're physically isolating ourselves from others and many of us are quarantining ourselves in our homes with very minimal physical interaction with the outside world i want to take a moment to thank those who are on the front lines the doctors and the nurses as well as those who are keeping essential services up and running um, pharmacy, grocery store, restaurant, police and firefighters, sanitation workers, all those people out there, um, even in the retail spaces, in the warehouses, in, you know, the mailmen, people who are keeping the essentials up and running. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. We are so grateful. Now, when we started the Lent season five weeks ago, we knew that we'd be giving up some actions and some habits that no longer served us. But very few of us, if any of us, expected us that we'd have to forgo physical interaction and contact with others, right? That we'd have to forgo those kind of physical day-to-day -day interactions that we take for granted, let alone that we would be recording Sunday services for our members to view online, right? I, I didn't expect this um, five weeks ago. Two weeks ago, I began to expect it as, as schools and college campuses and universities began to go online. I said, well, we're probably going to be next. Um, but five weeks ago, no, I, I didn't have that expectation. Now, I got to admit that the first week of distancing myself from others, I realized that I don't want to view this as a fasting from physical interaction as much as I want to uh, view this period as a spiritual feasting as a time to really uh, get back to those spiritual basics. Now, I found myself doing things like reaching for my coloring books and uh, even my coloring pencils for the first time since um, we moved back to our house in November. And I often use coloring as a way um, to kind of have a meditative exercise outside of meditation. It's kind of a nice relaxing thing for me to do. Um, I often will listen to music in the background. I will um, do things like um, repeat mantras or parts of prayers, those kinds of things as I'm actually um, doing the coloring. And I also um, found that I started to feel like washing my hands was becoming a chore. Obviously, it's a necessity we have to do. Um, we have to keep ourselves safe and others safe. Um, but I started to feel like it's a real chore. So I decided, you know what, my hands are starting to feel dry and rough. It's becoming a chore. I'm going to turn this into a spiritual and self-care exercise. So I went to the area where I keep my prayer and affirmation cards. And this is an example of one of the cards I'm using. It says, I am whole, well, and strong. I fuel my body with nutritious foods and my mind with healthy thoughts. This is from the Daily Word Affirmation Card Set, one of the ones that they offer. Um, you can get it through the Unity Store um, if you so choose to do so. And I got these cards out 
and I placed them at each of our sinks around the house. And I even timed myself with these cards, right? I, I spoke the written affirmation, timed what it would be so that I would reach the recommended 20 seconds that experts are wanting us to do whenever we wash our hands. So I simply say both parts of the affirmation, the full thing, three times while engaged in hand washing. And I try to be mindful as I do this, not just kind of, not just do it for repetition's sake, but rather be mindful when I'm doing this. And this practice, this simple practice helps turn hand washing from a chore into a meditative exercise. Now, I also found myself picking up my camera when we'd go out for walks around the neighborhood, right? I um, would even find myself um, taking pictures of the cats uh, around the house as they're being cute. Um, and I was making myself more aware of my surroundings and especially on our walks, more aware, aware of that flora and fauna as we got out to exercise. And I found myself getting back to those small things, those, those small things that bring me joy, that I often forego due to the busyness of my day-to-day -day life. Now, over the past two weeks, life for me has started to slow down. I don't know about you, I know that there's still times where I feel busy, but overall, life is starting to slow down. I feel like there's less to do in my day. And um, I feel like this experience is really giving us a time to pause, a time to reflect, a time to focus on that divine presence that exists within and exists in everything around us, right? It exists in you, it exists in me, it's in everything. Now, while this time may be a time of physical isolation and distancing, that does not mean that we have to go without connection or without love. Love and connection begin inside. They begin internally with that indwelling divine presence, that peace of the allness that we have within. And I wanna share with you, um, uh, it's from um, the Sunday um, message from our fasting and feasting book um, about this word allness. Reverend Eric Butterworth used the term allness interchangeably with the term God. And I find this to be a very beautiful, moving term. Now I've heard Ron and I've heard other leaders in unity use this term, but I realized I don't think I was really listening. I don't think I really absorbed everything um, and all the kind of deep wealth of meaning that comes with this term. So for some reason, as I was reading in the fasting and feasting book, as I was reading about this term allness, it's then I really started to listen to what this term means. In an excerpt from his book, Practical Metaphysics, which is also republished, uh, excerpts republished in the fasting and feasting booklet, Eric Butterworth says, quote, instead of thinking of God, I think allness. Allness means totality. It's not out there somewhere, but rather it's the whole of things, right? It's all life is present. If there's allness, the whole is present. All life is present. All wisdom is present. All substance is present. All guidance is present. All love is present. We live and move and have our being in this allness, which is present, not absent. Allness, another word for God. And um, it's one that I plan on adopting myself. I've started using it. So it's during this time of physical isolation that I have opted to focus on the allness, the life, the wisdom, the uh, substance, the guidance, the love that is present in each and every one of us and in each and every moment. This is not a time of isolation. This is a time of allness. I think this bears repeating. This is not a time of isolation. This is a time of allness. Each moment we can choose to listen to the allness, to see the allness, to touch, taste, and smell the allness. 
we have a choice to be mindful of the allness that is present in each one of us and in all things. So I'd like to, to ask, what can we do to become more aware of the allness? For those who have uh, been to um, some of the Sunday services where I've spoken before, you know I'm all about application. What, what can we actually apply to our daily lives? So what can we do to feel that we are living in allness rather than in isolation and separation in this time, in this, in this day of age that we find ourselves in, right? So I want to share five things that you can do to stay connected spiritually and socially. First and foremost, we can engage in spiritual practices. We can continue to pray, to meditate, to affirm the truth we know. You can continue maybe to um, continue spiritual readings. Um, maybe you like to read um, out of the Bible or some of the unity books. Maybe you enjoy following along this fasting and feasting every day or you take part in the daily word every day. Um, but continue those practices, whatever practices you have found to be uh, spiritually um, comforting and engaging for you. Now, one thing that we can do is we pray or meditate. A matter of fact, before we pray or meditate, is we can um, center our mind and spirit on this allness, on the divine presence within. We can be still and know. Be still and know. Know with every ounce of our being that we are in eachness within the allness of God. If we have affirmation cards that we're using, or we can even write them if we don't have affirmation cards. You can write your own affirmations. But if you use affirmations, place them around the places of your home that you use most often and that you visit most often. And take a moment just to center yourself in that allness before you say your affirmation. And when you're saying your affirmation, it's, it's good to repeat the words, but try to go beyond repeating the words. Try to feel the words, know the truth of what the words are, are speaking to you, of what the words say. So this is a great time, first and foremost, to go back to spiritual actions and habits and practices that um, are good for you, that um, you align with, with whatever um, religious traditions you follow, with whatever um, you know path you're on that you stay with that. And it's a great time to begin some of these spiritual exercises if you are a little bit out of practice. So second, um, maintain connections with those that you know and with those that you love and care for. I want you to think of this experience these uh, next few weeks and possibly months that we go through as physical distancing rather than social distancing. And me and Ron talked about this a, a little bit this week as I was getting ready to prepare this talk. So you still want to maintain your social connections. They're just moving to a slightly different format. So you can still contact people electronically through social media, through uh, video conferencing, through um, you know email, those sorts of things. You can teleconference, you can communicate by phone and you can even communicate by uh, written letters, written cards, if it's something that you want to do. Get out the sheet of paper and the pen, um, get out the envelope, write a letter, um, write a thank you card or send your blessings, uh, words of kindness, words of just saying, hey, I'm thinking about you in this difficult time to those that you love about, um, love and care about. Now, we would encourage you to join us, um, members of the Unity Congregation, for a meditation conference call on Thursdays at 11 a.m. And we're going to be doing that for the foreseeable future. Third, so we're, we went through one and two. We're on the third kind of recommendation. Try to take a break from news and social media. 
right? If you find yourself spending just a little too much time listening to news coverage or reading news stories through social media, take a break. Hey, I know this is, I know I'm going through this too. I, every day it's kind of like looking at the latest numbers, seeing the latest like things experts are saying. And sometimes the experts don't agree. There's experts over here saying this and experts over here saying this. So, and I know that some of these stories can also be really heartbreaking to hear about. You know, there's doctors and nurses who have lost their lives. There's lots of people out there who are um, dying every day from um, this virus. So there's a lot of heartbreaking um, stories out there. So just try to keep yourself from becoming overwhelmed during this period. So you might wanna limit you might want to consider limiting your viewing to a certain period of the day or maybe just once or twice a day so as not to become overwhelmed by the coverage and some of these heartbreaking stories that are circulating. Now, I'm not saying to shut yourself off um, from the outside world. We definitely don't want you to do this, but rather to interact with the news in moderation. Take maybe that time that you would spend um, instead of spending an extra 15, 20 minutes, you know, uh, scrolling through Facebook, maybe do something creative around your house or something useful. Um, maybe um, take a moment to pray or meditate, to center yourself and um, go within, right? Um, there's things that we can do to kind of take a break from all the um, news and that input of uh, often disturbing information that we're getting each day. Fourth, this is a fourth recommendation. Get outside, walk, run, play, enjoy nature as you can. Now, physical distancing um, from others in the outside world still allows us to get out and spend time in the fresh air, right? So you might wanna take your camera with you as you walk around outside um, in your neighborhood or your local park. A lot of the local parks are still open. I know the state parks here in Florida are closed um, right now, but a lot of the local parks are open. Um, if you get there early morning or um, evening, right before sunset, there's usually not a lot of people there. It's a good time to still keep that social or physical distancing in place, but um, still allowing yourself to get out and get some fresh air. So you might wanna to try to maybe take a contemplative walk or, or a meditative walk around your neighborhood, maybe uh, keep track of your breathing, um, take um, more of a mindful stance of what you're, what's around you, like the birds and the flora and fauna, that sort of thing. Um, you might wanna focus on your footsteps as you walk, like feel your actual feet on the, on, as they're um, hitting the ground those kinds of things. So make sure that you're getting out, that you're keeping yourself active during this time. Lastly, take care of yourself, right? We want you to take care of yourself. Your health is important to each and every one of us. So do the things that bring yourself joy, even small joys, even small joys count, right? Um, even if it's something small that brings you joy around the house, um, or around your home, spend time maybe being creative if you like drawing or coloring, painting, singing, making music, that sort of thing. Or maybe you enjoy sitting on your porch and watching the birds and the squirrels in the morning. Or maybe you enjoy um, going into your garden and spending the day outside that way. Or reading, whatever it is that brings you joy. Uh, maybe it's playing card games if you have family members that are um, in residence with you or um, board games, those sorts of things, whatever it is that brings you joy, try to make a little bit of time for that every day. Okay, think of it as self-care time. And when we're caring for ourselves, um, it's also been kind of recommended, and I've seen this by some of the experts online, that we might wanna keep a basic schedule in place, right? Uh, keep ourselves motivated and engaged during this time. Um, maybe you want to make sure you're kind of getting up and going to bed around the same time each day along with kind of having scheduled meals and exercise. I know my husband and I have been going out each evening when he gets off from work and making sure that we're making time for exercise. If it's on the weekends, we might take that exercise time in the morning, kind of switch it up a little bit, but we're making time and kind of scheduling our day um, so that we're still being uh, motivated and, and engaged. All right, so to review these five steps, continue your spiritual practices, uh, try to stay connected to friends and loved ones, 
take a break from news and social media, uh, especially if you start to feel yourself getting anxious or stressful, fearful, those kinds of things. Get outside, get some fresh air. Um, it's a little bit vitamin D, never hurt anybody. Get outside, um, get moving, walk around, even if you just need to do so in your front yard, backyard. If you don't feel comfortable going to the parks, those kinds of things, just get up and, and walk around your yard a little bit. Move a little bit if you can. Take time to care for yourself. Okay, that's the most important thing here. Take time to care for yourself. Um, we love you. We want to make sure that you get through this um, okay. And so taking care of yourself is very important to all of us. Now, before we leave here today, I want to share a prayer with you. This prayer is available on our Facebook page. It's called Prayer for a Pandemic by Cameron Belim. May we who are merely inconvenienced remember those whose lives are at stake. May we who have no risk factors remember those most vulnerable. May we who have the luxury of working from home remember those who must choose between preserving their health or making their rent. May we who have the flexibility to care for our children when their schools close remember those who have no options. May we who have to cancel our trips remember those who have no safe place to go. May we who are losing our margin money in the tumult of the economic market remember those who have no margin at all. May we who settle in for quarantine at home remember those who have no home. As fear grips our country, let us choose love. During this time when we cannot physically wrap our arms around each other, let us yet find a way to be the loving embrace of God to our neighbors. Amen. And virtual hugs from me here uh, from my home. I love you all and namaste. Have a wonderful day.